Welcome, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Hybrid Cloud, Optimizing Operational Efficiencies and Manageability, sponsored by Synoptic. My name is Tyler Suss. I am the Marketing and Communications Manager at Synoptic, and I'll be your moderator for today. Our attendees are encouraged to submit any questions at any time in the box on the lower left-hand side of the screen. All right, let's introduce today's speaker. Ryan Ryberry is our Senior Solutions Architect. Ryan has an over 25-year career in architecting enterprise information technology deployments. Uh, currently, Ryan leads Synoptics Charge in the Managed Performance Hub, uh, implement, implementing cloud strategies to help customers realize results. Ryan, over to you. Thank you, Tyler. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here today. We're talking about a topic that I'm really excited about. I think it uh, provides a great deal of digital disruption, and it's a game changer for many firms. And I'm very excited that we're able to uh, help them through the journey. We're going to start by really talking about what's at stake here. Today's CIOs are facing a very difficult decision in the cloud world. Whether to put their spends anywhere, in the cloud, in the data center, maybe Moonbase Alpha, but the problem is not knowing where to put it. Is your data center going to go away? What if you make the wrong decision? Because truly what's at stake is every CIO, and whenever I talk with them, they always joke about, you know, that it's a very short-term position because it's impossible to make the right decision. But what if the ocean moves? What if you're trying to get from A to B, and it is completely gone, and you have to reinvent the way you get there? What if you've got a $5 million PO and sitting in front of you for new storage and you don't know whether or not you're going to actually move to AWS or Azure? What if you're worried about the government coming and looking for your data? What if you need data sovereignty? <clears throat> what if you need to maintain control and you don't want to lose it to the cloud and once you put it there, you'll never be able to get it back out again? Truly what's important here is to understand what happens if you make the wrong choice? Companies on the left, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Microsoft, Google, they all leverage technology in a great deal. They use technology as a weapon almost. Think of the way Amazon has taken over the world of retail. Companies that haven't, Blockbuster, Borders, Kodak, Sun Microsystems, they missed the technology revolution. They missed the digital divide. They jumped and missed. Simply thinking about your firm, and while it may not be Kodak or Amazon, comparing yourselves to your, com your competition and whether you're the front runner or you're, the, you're following up trying to catch up with them, being able to leverage the technology and not having to make that decision, allowing hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, which really just means merging the technology of your existing data centers to the cloud data centers and using the right services, maybe it be storage, compute, application, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service for the right workload in the right place at the right time. <clears throat> Several years ago, no one would have thought of Salesforce as being as big as they are, ServiceNow being as big as they are. They've changed the way we do business. Your ERP systems used to be hosted only within your data centers, <clears throat> and now many of them are in the cloud. SAP is moving the exact same way. What we're finding is that, well, you can read these slides for yourself, but many companies today are really leveraging different technologies to change how they do business, moving things to the cloud, moving security there, moving workloads that are on for short periods of time that are bursty, not just test dev instances. And many companies are proving that this is the right way to do it. It's not just a cost savings, but it's enablement to use technology to be a leader in your industry and not a follower or to be the Kodak. Now, how would we do this? So now to really answers the, the question with using people, process, and technology. You're using multi-cloud, hybrid, using flexibility 
to move in and out of the cloud. How do you know which cloud is the right one? Is it Google, Microsoft, Amazon? How do you know that a year from now there won't be a great reason to use Microsoft instead of AWS or AWS instead? Or maybe Google Cloud Compute has an AI platform that your company can't live without and it's gonna make the difference. Knowing how to put the blocks together, I, as I tell my son, it's just taking Lego blocks, it's the building blocks of, of our technological world and putting them together in the right way. I like to say that I can build a purple dinosaur just as easily as I can build a Death Star out of the exact same Legos, but nobody wants a purple Death Star. So we try to use the right ones in the right place. And the big question is why? To be nimble and save money and move at the speed of light. <clears throat> Being able to stay relevant and be relevant in the digital world and make the technological revolution change that companies need to keep that relevance. We're gonna move in today to the, the, what is it that we're doing? We've talked about why it's important and now we're gonna talk about our solutions and how we support that. Uh, we have partnered with Equinix globally in their 172 data centers around the planet and they have an idea of an interconnection oriented architecture. We're gonna talk about that first. What IOA allows for is a digital transformation. It's using the technology, the networking, and those connections to change the way you do business <clears throat> and make it serve you instead of it holding you back, making it a profit center instead of a cost center. I think you'll find that everybody, every uh, consultant out there will tell you that digital disruption and being able to span that digital divide uh, will make the biggest difference IDC says that a third of the companies in every industry will be disrupted. They'll become the Kodaks of the world. So will you allow technology to disrupt you and go away or be the disruptor and take advantage of it and be the clear leader? The market trends all tell us that technology is going to be the leader um, in, in healthcare, education, everywhere. Everybody knows that in technology, technology companies are leveraging it but how do you use it properly? And how do you change it so that your business can benefit from it? And that's really what we're talking about is how does your specific industry, how does your specific product and application set get transformed by working with the cloud and being able to be more nimble um, than your com competitors? To solve it requires an interconnection first architecture. It's really changing your B2B or B2C connections uh, to the right place at the right time. And the example I like to use here is uh, a while back, Netflix was having issues with Comcast. They weren't peering directly. So in every Comcast user, which registered in the millions, was going over the open internet to get to Netflix. The experience was they could not get HD shows to view. They were getting very laggy. They would pause in the middle of a TV show or a movie. And generally speaking, the experience, the quality of the experience that Netflix users had was very, very low. And it was causing tremendous issues. In the end, all Comcast and Netflix did was privately peer. Take their peering from the internet, going across the major exchanges and going to a direct path. The result was that the user experience went through the roof the experience that that user had, there was no more legginess, no more buffering, and they had a better movie experience, TV experience. They, they, they watched shows straight through and they never had a single other issue. And many of us remember that. So it's really moving those connections to the right place, moving them closer to the edge. Akamai was famous with this, with their CDN networks, moving that content right to where the user was. And this solution in an IOA architecture, it allows you to move your business to where your people are. We like to either call it the source or the destination. Where's the data coming from? Where's the data going to? And moving it in such a way that you can get it out there so it's closer to, the, uh, to your customer who ultimately you are serving either by uh, providing a, a process or selling a service. And we do that through a few different solutions. The Performance Hub. The Performance Hub is really a network-based solution. It's the foundation of IOA. It's really moving the right connections globally. Right, do you have uh, plants in China, Singapore, Frankfurt, 
And where are your users at? It's connecting them, whether they're in on the East Coast of Americas and putting performance hubs in so that you can present that data from the EU into America and connecting them at wire rate, not depending on the internet. <clears throat> Many companies use MPLS technologies today uh, or VPLS technologies. And what we're doing here is really creating a new network that is controlled by the company allows for direct connectivity between the data centers such that you have a, a better quality of experience. And once you get to the data center, the world is open. There are network providers in every data center. I believe that the count is up to 17,000 today. Every cloud provider is on net with uh, Equinix, and it allows you to take the right people, connect them to the data, and move them at the speed of light anywhere in the world. And really, the benefits are helping you move to the cloud. It's taking your legacy data centers, moving them in a way, again, through a hybrid approach, but not over the internet, that move, and it keeps corporate compliance, security, and reliability to a maximum. It allows you to move into the cloud and move the right workloads at the right time seamlessly so that your users and your partners are not affected, and do so in a cost-effective way that allows for generally a reduction in cost and an increase in speed to performance. It allows for more efficient networks, having a direct connecting, we'll talk about that in a use case shortly. The quality of experience, which ultimately is the result of how do users feel when they're leveraging your system, whether it's in a hybrid cloud, uh, the cloud, or on your existing data center. And having the provider choices in any data center and increasing that manageability because now you can control where the, where the data goes, where the data flows, and the visibility into it with your tools instead of it going just over the internet. You control every aspect of it. <clears throat> the typical challenges really is that quality of experience. We hear that day in and day out. We have a data center on the west coast of the US, and we've got users that are in the EU that just simply can't work with the application because it's too slow. Now, how do you optimize that? Is that moving the data closer to them? Is it moving um, an application to, uh, you know, around? Is it WAN optimization? If lack of visibility, the costs are outrageous. Uh, we just spoke with a client that was spending over a million dollars a month with M on their MPLS spend, and we were able to come back and, and show them what a new data center process would look like, not getting rid of MPLS, but optimizing it by allowing shorter runs uh, creating a backbone directly for them, uh, and it allowed them much higher throughput with much lower costs across the board, and access to all the public clouds, uh, including Salesforce, Box, uh, ServiceNow, depends on who you're with, and you can directly peer with them. And it's a seamless, easy solution. The general use cases are supporting your people, the quality of experience, moving your data around so that they have that better experience locations, moving data closer to, the, to your hubs, to your offices, or to your end customer, and connecting to the clouds. The vast majority of what we do today is connecting uh, a multiple network com connection points, offices, data centers, and connecting them to the clouds in multiple locations. It's not boiling the ocean. It's not setting up 20 new data centers, but it's one or two, depending on where it makes sense for them. Moving on to Data Hub. Data Hub is really just a building block on top of Performance Hub. Performance Hub is the network aspect that we talked about. And Data Hub is putting cloud adjacent compute, data or compute, on top of the Performance Hub. So it's just adding that extra layer to it. <clears throat> and what this allows for is your firm to have the ability to put compute where it wants. Maybe it's a very large compute farm. Maybe it's very small just for tools to manage the network. Moving cache data, moving the, the user experience. Uh, maybe you have a primary data center in Dallas, and users on the east and the west coast have a less than ideal experience because of latency. Maybe that short amount of latency is a huge impact to them. And being able to move read-only databases and the application set out directly to them makes that experience for them much more efficient and when calculated in, in you know, clicks per second and the number of seconds you're saving every user for firms that have you know, even 1,000 users, 
that simple click savings, not having users wait, can pay for the entire solution overnight. It's making users as efficient as they can and having their experience better. Employees are hard to get. Customers are hard to get these days. And what we really want to do is help you keep them and make that experience very rich, moving it to proximity and covering the globe depending on where it matters. And as you grow with your company, if you move to, uh, to Asia-Pac, we simply add performance hubs and data hubs out around the globe to make sense for where you're at. The typical challenges are data growth. Again, we started this conversation with a CIO that had millions of dollars to spend uh, on a storage purchase order. Do I put that in the cloud? Do I manage you know, AWS Glacier? Is that the right place for our backups? What is the right thing to do? And what Data Hub allows us to do is have the right data in the right place and take advantage of the paths that AWS, Google, and Amazon, or the, and Azure uh, provide for us. It's doing what's right for your company at the right time. Maybe you've got an enterprise agreement with uh, Microsoft, and you're going to move your office workloads to the cloud, and your uh, application engine is sitting with AWS, and you've got some AI that you want to do with Google. Our solution allows for, with trivial differences in costs, allowing you to connect from not just one, all data centers. <clears throat> Earlier this year, Oracle was starting to force their clients uh, into the Oracle Cloud at, from their existing data centers through uh, licensing issues. And what we found was there was a huge push to move to the Oracle Cloud. And well, that's good for Oracle, but it was having a tremendous impact, again, to our, our users. And the use case that we've been talking about this whole time, that $5 million PO, was because of that, is that the CIO was to sign off on the storage for a new Oracle cluster, only to find out that they were in the process of being forced into the Oracle cloud. If he had signed that PO, they would have wasted $5 million. So in this case, they, this company happened to be with, uh, with us and had a hybrid cloud and allowed seamless transition directly in there and it made it easy for them. So they had lost no money. And in this case, not having the $5 million to spend in their data center and being able to move to the cloud and make it nimble for them allowed for a very seamless transition and to take advantages of some cost savings that they were able to do by signing early and fast. Keeping data in the data center does allow for sovereignty and compliance. You have access to the physical data and it's not residing within one of the clouds that you can't see or touch. And the resiliency, being able to use multiple clouds at any point being able to have one set of data and not pay for it in three clouds, allowing Google, Amazon, and Microsoft to access the exact same data in that data cloud, the data hub. And then integrating clouds. A good deal of what we do is connecting Google to Amazon, Amazon to Azure, and being able to move data back and forth seamlessly, uh, depending on what's right for you at what time. The use cases is simply integrating cloud storage into your existing compute farm. Uh, maybe you don't want to spend any more money on your existing SAN network. Uh, <clears throat> NetApp has a fantastic solution with the NetApp private storage, and it allows you to burst into the cloud, replicate data back and forth, and have the same experience, again, that quality of experience back and forth either way. Big data analytics, connecting your data to Hadoop farms all over the world. And then replication and disaster recovery having your production workloads in one data center, having DR in the cloud for the instant on use cases um, <clears throat> for automation and allowing to have the lowest cost disaster recovery and business continuity products or solutions. Really using them, you'll find that it depends on what we're trying to solve for. Or we're working on changing the network or we're changing the way you work with the cloud, optimization, um, but that's what we're here for. That's my job, is to design and architect solutions that allow you to leverage the product set for the right reason in the right place all around the world. <clears throat> to talk, for the performance of uh, concerns, uh, security is a huge concern. Um, being able to have complete transparency as your data moves from your data center into the cloud is a big deal. We have clients that allow for <clears throat> um, uh, control, security access, firewall rules, VPN tunnels between all of them, and it allows you to control the cost center of whether it's software or hardware. Performance. 
uh, we'll use, show in a use case in just a moment the performance gains by working with the backend uh, access points of all the different clouds. The agility and scale that the clouds do provide is tremendous. Being able to turn on infinite number of VMs in moments versus buying hardware and being six, nine months out uh, makes for tremendous change and a disruption. Again, our goal here is to help you uh, change the way you're using technology today and have it really be a leading factor of what you do in the world and controlling your complexity and your costs. No longer do you have a million contracts. You have a few providers you work with and it's using the right technology in the right place. Interconnecting cloud use cases. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, we had a client that was working in AWS and they had an enterprise agreement and without really thinking about uh, leveraging Microsoft, they were able to move into the government cloud to maintain compliance, support their customers better. And <clears throat> that client found that going over the internet was outrageously expensive and they were able to reduce their cost by 95% by going through Direct Connect through the Equinix platform, through uh, the cloud exchange. So we provided Direct Connect to AWS going through the Cloud Exchange and Express Route to Azure allowed us to have, uh, in this case, they were using 20 gigs a second out of AWS into Azure and it allowed them to move petabytes of data in a short order and allowed for continuous replication uh, because where their app farm was sitting in AWS and the storage was sitting where it needed to be with data at rest encryption and access to uh, the government cloud for Azure and other government entities. Uh, was it becoming an increasing requirement. So it allowed them to leverage the best of both platforms for the right reason. And again, we're not saying AWS is the answer, Azure is the answer. Each application has a specific use case that makes sense. And what we're trying to do is help you leverage where to put those applications for the right reason at the right time. Maybe that's all in one data center, maybe it's all in one cloud, maybe it's 15. It depends on where you're using it and what makes sense. Generally speaking, the right use case makes a tremendous amount of financial sense and allows your company to really make that digital transformation and capture all the gaps that, were, that needed to be filled. Interconnecting data, again, the same thing. It allows for uh, integration of all the tool sets, being able to process things uh, in speedy ways, secure with access to all of the providers. What we find with companies that are having issues with, say, MPLS networks being too expensive is that they're stuck where, say, 50 or 60% of the, of the nodes are not too bad. They're very cost competitive, and there's a lot of reasons to have a single provider globally. 30 or 40% of them are tremendously more expensive than the incumbents, say, in the U.S. And what a performance hub allows is using an MPLS network on the East Coast, the West Coast, the Asia Pac might be a different one connecting those to the data center, having the data centers be redundant and connected to each other allows for a more cost-effective, streamlined approach and integrates the cloud into what you're doing day in and day out. It's a very simple, easy transformation because you're simply adding the, the Equinix data centers into your existing network. The other case study we have today is uh, an ad technology firm. They were serving uh, ads for as simple as that seems. Like the little company of Google does the same thing. So there's obviously some money in it, isn't there? Uh, they were serving ads out of AWS to the AWS ad, ad exchange. They were also going to the uh, San Jose based ad exchange. What they found was is that things were going very slow. They were competing for business and they were losing out on, on ad on bids. So what we did is we came in and we analyzed what they were doing. We looked at where they were going. We gave them routes across the board to understand where is the right place to go by analyzing the network. It took a day. It was a very lightweight engagement. And we took a look at how they were leveraging the technology. And we realized that going to Amazon Direct Connect and directly peering with the ad exchange in San Jose allowed for a tremendous reduction in time. Going over the internet, their average transmission was, went from 11 seconds to two and a half. The reality is what we found was is that their average use case was actually much higher than the 11 because um, going back and forth became an increase for each transaction as it was going back and forth from a bid to request to conf confirmation. And what we, were, what we were allowing them to do was to keep their command and control in AWS 
and ultimately we put a server directly on the Backbone router that was dedicated to this firm. And by putting their bid engine on the Backbone, it took their average latency to one millisecond. It's actually sub one millisecond, but uh, one millisecond was a safe number. And by putting their bidder on the ad exchange, on the Backbone router, directly on the BGP peer, it allowed for nothing to be in the middle. And the CTO's comment to me after it was online and live and working well was, my coders don't even have to be good anymore. They can make mistakes. They can have loops. They can have all sorts of things that don't make sense. And we're still going to win because we're 10 times faster than the next guy. We work so efficiently that we're winning things, and we now have to manage what bids we take in. So for them, it worked very well. It allowed them to become a front runner in their industry and to cause disruption that others need to now catch up to. And they were able to capitalize on that. The other use case is a very, very large uh, defense contractor. Um, they did have an aging network, MPLS network. As you can see, the bandwidth metrics that they had there. Uh, some of the sites were large. Uh, there's also some aggregate bandwidth in here. And what we found was by moving them to, instead of a giant MPLS network, by moving their offices, connecting to performance hubs, just simply connecting to performance hubs, lowered their total overall network spend because the opposite side, the Z side of the network was going to a data center instead of the carrier so they could control it a little bit better. And now each of those sites can pick whatever bandwidth provider that they want uh, for layer two circuits. In this case, they stayed with the incumbent. It just simply lowered costs and we were, it allowed them to increase their throughput at each location. And then we simply built a WAN backbone for them between the data centers allowed for much higher rates of throughput and a cost savings at the same time, allowing for an overall blended 50% uh, reduction in total cost for them. And it's not to get a glance. Uh, we've been around for 16 years. Uh, we, all we do is technology. We are an IT services firm. We're not a VAR, we're not a reseller. We are here to serve our customers no matter where they are. We have clients that are in co-location, in the cloud, on their own premise. We have customers that we support globally. Our goals are to support you and your technology anywhere you are. It doesn't matter where in the world. We're happy to take you from your data center into the cloud or out of the cloud, between clouds, supporting multiple ones. Our goal is to make sure that you are using technology, that we help you with processing and, and services in such a way that it enables you to become that industry leader, to have others chasing you, and whether it's a single office law firm or a global ad technology firm. It makes no difference. We support healthcare, financials, business, uh, manufacturing, basically every vertical there is. Um, our goal is to serve our customers well and help them leverage technology. We are IT. That's what we do. And we provide easy to use and easy to consume services. We find that when customers want to have some support, we want to find a way to get that to them. Transform grow and operate their business uh, using our pillars of service. Uh, today, I do want to leave you with, we've talked a lot about data center today, but Synoptic does provide end user support, full service IT firm, security services uh, globally. So we provide, we will support, we are IT completely for some firms where we do everything. We are Bob and IT in the corner, uh, changing printer cartridges for them as well as providing global BGP backbone coverage for other firms, depending on what makes sense. Managing your cloud or managing your office, we are here to support you. Thank you very much for your time. It's much appreciated. Tyler, I'll hand it back to you to see if there's any questions. Thank you, Ryan, great presentation. I just want to let all the uh, attendees know in our audience today that this webinar will be recorded and we will send out a on-demand version to all in attendance today, as well as the slide deck in case there's any sections that you want to review with, with your team. Um, we're coming close to the end of our allocated time for the webinar. If you have any additional questions, Ryan's contact information is up on the screen. Uh, we want to thank everybody for attending today's session. Uh, again, if you have any additional questions, feel, feel free to reach out to Ryan directly. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks all. Bye-bye.